<clears throat> Hello everyone, I'm Greg Weaver. Welcome to The Audio Analyst. Pardon me. Today, I am honored to welcome another special guest, Mr. Gail Sanders, the co-founder of Martin Logan in the early 1980s, an award-winning Hall of Fame designer, and most recently, after a nearly 10-year hiatus from the industry, founder of Icon Audio. Now, while there have been any number of attempts to develop active loudspeakers, including some with integrated room correction capability, or to build an active controller with room correction for passive loudspeakers, much like the Lynn DSM music players that I've reviewed, what Gail and his team at Icon Audio have done is to build an entirely active system with their debut product, the Icon Image One. Beneath the exterior beauty of the Icon Image One beats the heart of a technological milestone. Each of the two inert and proprietary constrained layer speaker cabinets house four exceptionally optimized transducers, each precisely driven by its own individually dedicated next generation Class D power amplifier. Now, the brain behind the brawn is the eye control center, which uses powerful DSP engines and advanced psychoacoustic based algorithms to deliver time and amplitude corrected information to each of those four individual amplifiers per channel correcting for room-related issues and placement challenges. Now, with an ample choice of both analog and digital inputs and outputs, it offers the convenience of being controlled from your iOS or Android device right from your listening chair. Now, this system truly sets the bar today for what can be achieved with an all-active system. You simply add your source or sources and you are done. Now, as I've mentioned, many manufacturers have made attempts that, sadly, just really fall short and haven't been all that successful. Certainly, not to my ears, at least. I asked Gail to join us today because the Icon Image One is the first such fully digital system approach that is able to fulfill its lofty potential. Let's meet the man behind all this musical magic, Gail Sanders. Here he is. All right, everybody. Here he is, as promised, Gail Sanders with his latest venture, Icon. Uh, I've heard the uh, remarkable image one, thanks to a few. Well, I heard some protos, and then I heard the actual device, uh, which is pretty impressive. But Gail's here, and uh, welcome, sir. Thanks for taking time to join us today. Well, thanks, Greg. It's great to be here, and hi, everyone. Uh, great to have a chance to, to uh, speak to everyone. For sure. Well, I'm glad you're here, buddy. I, I got to tell you, you know, you've seen my reaction, even from the prototypical versions. We've mm -hmm. talked a lot at the shows. Mm -hmm. um, now, I've never had the opportunity to hear the icon, um, the image one, in a, uh, a separate environment other than the real, other than the show. Uh, but my buddy David Solomon, um, he's crazy about it. You know, David. He's he's a character. <laughs> he loves his. He's always posting on YouTube. His his listening in his room with the yeah. with the image one, um, and you know, I've, I've, I've got to tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm not surprised you went this direction, but I'm impressed with how you've managed to go this direction. Because, Gail, you know, there are a lot of other companies that have tried this, and we could whisper about them, but I don't want to focus on them. I want to talk about Icon. <laughs> so, about 2015, this all started, correct? Right, right. right. Tell me what the impetus was for this particular project, buddy. You were you were out of the game since what about two thousand five or six when you sold Martin Logan? That's exactly right. Yeah. Well, I think now tonight we're going to talk a little bit about about uh, Martin Logan, right? Okay. But it kind of moves from Martin Logan. So many of the things with the electrostatic transducer that was back, you know, in nineteen seventy eight, nineteen eighty, and we were in the world of vinyl and all of that, and. And the electrostatic transducer, I could see that that was a way to really move things forward if I could create a reliable electrostatic transducer. But that was back in the day of analog, yeah, vinyl records. And, well, what was that, 1978, 1980? 
And yeah. um, that I could see that same thing. After I had retired from Martin Logan, and I spent that 10 years from 2005 to 2015 just relaxing, just watching the world, but finding that, you know, I loved audio. I mean, we're an audiophile at, at our hearts, right? We can't, we can't stop not loving this industry and not loving what we do. And I kept seeing things had changed. And now the fundamentals were very different. We could see, I could see that at the time they hadn't appeared, Koba's uh, title had not had appeared, but you could see where the day was going to come, where we were going to have uncompressed studio quality data, music, coming into our living rooms with a total plethora catalog, huge catalog of almost any music, you know, and all of us, I mean, just behind you, Greg, I can see we all have our giant collection of albums and CDs, but it's not even a, a drop in the bucket compared to now what we have available. And it's a studio quality bitstream coming our way and with zero compression. Yeah. So what can one do with that? If you look at that as what you're working with, and that's what became the working mechanism for me to start Martin Logan, to bring a team together, to see what we could do if we took some of the finest DACs, the finest DSP, huge DSP engines, started working in the filter world. We were able to take out some of the passive components that, that you know, resistance, hysteresis, resonance, all of those things that, uh, are, are the bane of, of of clarity and precision, and put that put that in place with the precision that can be had with 56 bit, 64 bit DSP engines, and see what can be accomplished. And basically, uh, that was what started Icon, and and um, in so many ways, I uh, would talk about it. It's almost science fiction in some of the solutions <laughs> that it came about. Well, you've built a hell of a team too, right? I mean, you've yeah. put together, I've met some of these guys. They're pretty impressive people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now um, it yeah. took, uh, it was 2019 when the actual launch, correct? Yes, correct. Yeah, when the That's image right, went right, launched. Right, yeah. right, right. Um, I mean, we had prototypes and things out sure. there in uh, 20, uh, 2016 or so, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I went to a few of those too. Would yeah. you be kind enough to encapsulate what the Image One is? Because I know, and you know, but tell the, tell the viewers today sure. exactly what it is. For sure, the Image One is a system. Yeah, uh, it consists of. As a matter of fact, we have we see it right here. It consists of first of all the eye control preamp processor, and in, housed with inside this is a um, powerful DAC. Powerful DSP engine, uh, which outputs eight channels of information. So we are able to then output tweeter, mid range, front woofer, back woofer, filters directly to each driver. Also, housed within this is a unique ability called wavelet room correction where we are able to literally with the use of a microphone calibrated microphone right. we're able to look at the room in both the amplitude and the time domain look at the speaker and the room how they interact and then send this off to our servers and correct with these powerful algorithms correct in the time domain yeah. and in the and in and in the amplitude, amplitude domain, domain we correct yeah. right so that's basically and of course this has multiple uh, uh, digital and analog inputs, powerful analog to digital engines. So those uh, turntable lovers find it uh, very analog in sound and very rewarding to listen with your record. So it takes all inputs. Sure. And then this then drives the, um, the image one itself. And housed inside the image one that is um, four high powered amplifiers, that then individually drive tweeter, mid-range, and a front woofer and a back woofer, subwoofer, basically. Okay. And the so the rear, both. the rear woofer is more of a subwoofer than just it's. Well, both woofers are. Uh, they only operate from 150 hertz down okay. to okay. 22 hertz. They have the same. Do they receive the same signal, or are they? I mean, are they phase corrected? What do they do? They're phase corrected. 
Okay. Actually, they're time gated. Okay. And so, <clears throat> by the digital arrangement, we can time gate the front and the back woofer such that when they launch energy into the room, they null everything around the perimeter, or significantly null, not completely, yeah. but yeah. for all practical purposes, they null everything around the perimeter of the woofer and towards the back. And so what happens is all of the base energy is launched forward into the room and minimizes any of the destruction, destructive room uh, interference. Sure. So you get just this lovely bottom end. Uh, number one, you get this extremely deep bottom end because yep. by the use, since we have control of everything, the control of the deck, the amplifier, the drivers, the cabinet, the chamber, all of that, we can calibrate this thing to be flat in this little bitty box down to about 22 hertz. Um, but yet it waveguides this information into the room in this beautiful uh, wave front that uh, minimizes uh, room interaction. And so you get really uniform, deep, extended bottom end and almost uh, very right out of the box, almost in every application. Well, I can attest to how good they sound because, uh, and you know, the footprint is remarkably small given yes. the device. I mean, you know, my, my speakers are... Um, Something like six hundred pounds each. Yeah, they're big. <laughs> yeah, two hundred twenty-five thousand yeah, dollars. Yeah, uh, yeah, they're enormous. Now, what is probably one of the first things that someone will be taken with, in my estimation, when they hear the image one the first time, is exactly how large they sound. Um, yeah. they, they are yeah. completely full range right. speakers, right. and they disappear from the room, but they leave you. You're not feeling like these are mini monitors or anything. I mean, these are, these are impressively full bodied loudspeakers and dude. Now, when you talk about the inputs, both analog and digital, how many inputs are we talking about, Gil? Um, they, uh, I, don't, I don't remind me, I want to, I want to talk a little bit about that clarity and precision and the big sure. sound of how we achieve that. Sure. Um, inputs. We'll talk about that in a second. I just wanted to clarify how many inputs we have. Right, 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 right. Um, there's, there's, I believe four analog inputs, and they're both oh, wow. balanced. Uh, two, two analog inputs. I'm sorry. Okay. Balanced and unbalanced. Okay. And so single ended and XLR both, right? Yeah. Uh huh. And then there are uh, there's USB, SPDIF, uh, coax sure. optical, uh, 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 digital inputs as well. Cool. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So it is very yeah. versatile. So very go ahead and talk about yeah. how you. I mean, I, I'm yeah. I'm. I just wanted people to know that, you know, when you see this thing, if it's not playing, you may be surprised when it comes on because they are there. You're not feeling like you're missing anything with these guys. They do a tremendous job. And we bring our little, our, this, and it's, it's not, it's small, right? I mean, it's sure. like 42, relatively small, small yeah. 120 pounds. And, yeah. and, but I've tried to, I've really worked at compressing it because, you know, we want it to work in as many living spaces as we possibly sure. can. Um, and it has that furniture quality look to it as well. Um, but it, it, we've brought it into a lot of these room environments where there's like these, we're replacing these huge speakers and the image ones actually extend deeper in bottom end uh, by their nature because of the fact that we've been able to control all of the elements sure. uh, through the system. Uh, but the, also the other element of uh, precision clarity um, a lot of companies today are talking about it, and we totally support the fact that the, the, the whole issue of time, the whole issue of precision in time, the phase correct, the group delay, the ability for that speaker to launch the full spectrum in a very time coherent manner. Your ear is so sensitive to that. I mean, it is. Yeah. I mean, right. I mean, you know, we can still we can hear. Well, there's a sparrow 10 feet away, 10 feet up in the air. I mean, we could, we know exactly where it is in a three dimensional sound field somehow by the arrival time of right. that information coming to our ear. And it's the same thing with a loudspeaker. And so being. Well, I've heard have, it said that it's three microseconds can be detected by the human ear. Absolute microseconds. Yeah. Exactly. That's tiny. Not milliseconds. Yeah. Microseconds. microseconds. Yeah. So, yeah. And but that's can, how. The zero brain mechanism is pretty clever to, to be able to to hone in on things like that and determine direction and size. And you're using that same kind of technology. Well, you're capitalizing we're, on we're your capitalizing technology to make your ear work better. 
Right. And so, and, and a lot of people spend a lot of time, time correcting their drivers and all of that. And, and that's great. And, but the thing is with the passive components, there's just so much that you can do with the capacitor inductor resistors. And, yeah. and once you're out of that domain and you've direct, you're direct driving the amplifier and the driver, and you have a 56, actually 64 bit depth DSP engine. That's significant. <laughs> taking that huge, now uncompressed bit of data, and you've got all that to work with. And now, not only can we time correct each driver a microsecond at a time, we can also time correct anything within the spectrum of that driver with the system. And so, it, it, you know, w w the whole reason I started with the electrostatic transducer back in the day was because of its incredible precision. Sure. And even though there were some challenges with it, right? I mean, it's big, it's huge, it's gotta be big. That stat panel's gotta be big to do its job. And um, it, in some instances, it had a, it was challenged to have the same dynamics that a well-designed yeah. dynamic loudspeaker could have. And I've always wanted my cake and eat it too, you know? <laughs> and, and that's what this, concept allows us to do is to be able to bring that time coherence that resolution get the whole system up to that place where it is as coherent as my stat panels were back in the day and yet have small footprint uh uh great dynamics and extended uh bottom end uh that, that uh, you've experienced uh, I have, yeah. yeah. And uh, Gail, the other thing that had, that always impressed me when even the prototypes was the microdynamic capabilities. Um, right. What you're able to do uh, down near the noise floor with shading and things—it's remarkable. And I, I mean, I've heard I've heard heard other companies that have tried to do this time domain control with digital stuff and. Oh. I'm not trying to slam anybody. I'm not here to, to hurt anybody's business at all. But I, in my estimation, what you guys are doing with the Image One is the clearest, most, <clears throat> the highest performing example of that process I've yet heard. And I do. I. What's the retail now? It's like twenty. Twenty five thousand for the system. For the entire system, yes. Yeah, that's so, yeah, yeah. The pair of speakers, power amplifiers, uh, the wavelet connections, my calibrated microphone, all of that. Yeah. yeah. Plug in your source, and you're done. Right. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So this is right. yeah. This is this is a complete right. system. Correct. Um, yeah, it's pretty impressive. It's pretty darn impressive. Thank you. Um, Thank you so much, Greg, for that for that no. compliment. We, we we feel the same way, and yeah, I'm just so glad to hear you say it. Yeah. Well, you, you, you. you've done a great job yeah. with it. Um, now it took. Can you do, do you want to talk about some of the unique challenges you guys had to overcome? Because it took you a few years to get this right for you to put put it out and say we're ready to we're ready to sell this. Were, were there? I mean, I, I assume you know when we did that um, that speak that loudspeaker uh, uh, roundtable back in spring, you know, I, I clearly remember the look on your face and you're like you know these boxes they have all these. Weird. I never, you know, I never had to deal with a box before. This box has oh, its own box. mind. <laughs> true. Well, that's what the five years was all about. <laughs> true, 15 to 20. <laughs> yes, I forgot oh. about that. That's great, great comment. Yeah, um, I was a dipole guy. Yeah, you know, and um, and and one of my the before I started developing Icon, you know, I was just working with Pat working with passive drivers, working. Sure. I wanted to just play, I couldn't stay away from it. And so I, I started to do a whole, just dove in to do a whole, a number of projects. And, and we'll, I'll, I'll even show you some of the, the, the projects and we'll, we'll look at those. Um, sure. Uh, there, were, there were four different specific wow. prototypes leading up to the image one. And uh, multiple drivers, multiple boxes, multiple testing environments, learning the cr learning the craft, filling in the cracks. I mean, I knew speaker design, and I integrated sure. woofers with the electrostats, and I, but I and I do dipoles and electrostats. And that was no easy trick, by the way. As, yeah, as some was, people yeah, we, may not know. Yeah, there were textbooks on that. We kind of had to write our own textbooks on that. Yeah, that was uh, that was a tough trick. On dynamic drivers, right? <laughs> 
Um, but it just, there was a learning curve, absolutely. Um, yeah. To understand the priorities, um, to understand that a cabinet must be inert, that it makes its own music. And it's its own voice, the, yeah. The efforts that all of my peers go through to dance <laughs> that cabinet out, hey, it's real. You know, I learned that, you know, a long time. Um, the rigidity of mounting of the drivers, um, just on and on and on. Management of the bottom end, how to damp a woofer correctly, how to how to get bottom end extension. All of those things uh, are a, a craft, they're an art form, they're sure. science, they're all of that. And you have to learn all of that if you want to compete. Uh, by the way, I got deep respect for all of uh, my dynamic uh, loudspeaker peers. Uh, it's a job, uh, buddy. It, yeah, it was, it was not an easy job <laughs> climbing up to get the level to where I felt like I uh, had really a competitive product. And that started in the analog, that started in, in the uh, passive world. Okay. And I literally got to that place where you, know, you put your world-class components together and your world-class cabinet design and what have you got well i've got kind of the same thing that my peers already have on the market <laughs> well this is you, you know, know what I mean? just i got a great respect for them they're doing a great sure. job so maybe i'll just relax and enjoy their products uh, and of course my electrostats but then when the magic came when i partnered up with a um, well, just a premier uh, uh, engineer uh, barrett bomer and this was where the eye control came from and barrett said you know i i kept saying to all my electronics associates out there gosh i wish there was a preamp with the dac that had multiple outputs where I could access a very powerful DSP engine and do all of my crossover work in the TSP domain right. in an uncompromised way. Yeah. And Barrett just happened to be designing that very product because he was an astute electrical engineer, digital engineer, and he knew speaker design extremely well. And that's when we partnered up uh, and, uh, and uh, I really put this the, the, the eye control to work. And it also, it's got the wavelet analysis program and a very right. powerful testing environment within that analysis environment within that allows me to also look at my drivers, crossover points, everything in, and I'll, sh I'll be showing you, uh, I sure. hope we can talk a little bit about uh, how, with, how the room correction works. Sure. And it allows us to, me to look microscopically at each driver at it in the time domain at the distortion time domain amplitude all, all of those things at once a very uh, very powerful very powerful tool now when you <clears throat> when you analyze a room when 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 the icon first gets set up um and you use your calibrated microphone so right. do you um do do is it like a recording that's made and uploaded to a website to do the processing and, and it's done and then downloaded to the device is it uh real-time processing how how does that work yeah it's it's um uh pretty straightforward okay it uh you the, the system knows that you're going to place the mic tweeter height 48 inches from the tweeter in an axis with the right ear when you're listening to the right speaker, left ear when you're listening to, well, right, left. When you're listening to each sure. speaker, you set the microphone in line with your ear from between the tweeter and your ear uh, off the ground 48 inches from there. So now the microphone okay. knows exactly, the system now sure. knows exactly where that microphone is. Sure. And it has a calibration point, a, a map that it's looking at, that it sees as perfect. And we'll we'll show that on the we'll, we'll make sure to show that on the screen sure. and it looks it's a three dimensional map it shows time in one direction it shows the frequency response in another direction and then it color codes the amplitude so okay. blue is extremely quiet I think up to red and brown which is very loud so you see kind of this ice and it's an eighty millisecond time window so you let the bass develop it takes eighty milliseconds for you know a low bass note to develop and where the high frequencies are very fast. So this sure. thing looks like a nice cream cone. 
And what happens is, is that um, you will see all kinds of aberrations that the room puts into the sure. system. Perfect system. Drop it in, million dollar system, drop it into any room and it is just wrecked by the room. It's at the mercy of the room itself, sure. And 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 this, you can move the speakers all you want. You know, this room's going to have its way yep. with the system. The um, the other thing is that um, as it's as it's looking at all of this, um, well, anyway, it's it has that ability. Then it sends this the that data. You do a sweep from low frequency right. to high frequency. It then sends that data out to our servers. Our okay. servers then apply algorithms that then bring them back to that contour, that contour map that we were looking, we were talking about, and corrects all of the jaggies and the, the time problems that occur, since downloads the file, sends it back to the system, and then recorrects. Makes perfect sense. Yeah. And of yeah. course, if you if you if you have to rearrange the room or if you move to a different room, you can redo this. Redo it and, it's, and get it correct every time. Uh, yeah, fifteen to thirty minute operation. What I was going to say, I know what I was going to say was that with the traditional equalization systems, they they correct in the time domain. I mean, in the amplitude domain. Amplitude, but, yeah. You know, you got your lumps yeah. and bumps and everything yeah. get flattened out, but that doesn't that Fix doesn't the time domain. The time domain, and no. <laughs> many times, what happens is it actually exaggerates those problems that were already there. So by using the wavelet, it's kind of interesting. Uh, if you look at FFT versus wavelet, if you look at how you're trying to look at uh, 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 a sound, you can either look at it uh, in the amplitude domain or you can look at it in the time domain, but it's kind of like quantum physics. You can't really see both at the same time. Heisenberg uncertainty, yes. Yeah, so, so that's, yeah. And so yeah. The, um, the, the, there are different shapes of wavelets that we can choose to then send out and come back and they'll give us different proportions of relationship of understanding of what's going on in the time and what's going on in the frequency domain. Cool. And um, uh, 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 it's able to then take a look at that across the spectrum and both correct both in time and amplitude. Pretty, pretty cool stuff. Yeah, it, it really is. And, and for people who haven't heard this, and by the way, guys, if you get a chance, go to a show and hear these things. They're yeah. remarkably amazing. Um, I, I can tell you that it works, and it works really well. Um, yeah. And that's why, you know, I've mentioned there are other companies doing this, but Gail, I swear to you, not just because I respect your work and have known you a long time, I think what you guys have achieved with this device is significantly remarkable it's an ex it's not just a good product it's an excellent product um and thank you, what well, well <laughs> thank you for doing it gail i mean my my whole point of this is twenty five thousand dollars for an entire system i mean dude i've got close to three quarters of a million bucks sitting over here and then now it's 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 very impressive but it's taken me years to get this right in this room and timing and, and figuring it all out. What this system does at any room I've heard it in, in three or four different shows, and we all know show conditions are not good. good. Um, the system always sounds fabulous. Um, it sounds bigger than it looks. It sounds completely full body. It has nuance. It has the ability to completely disappear and leave only instrumental images and yeah. leave you. I mean, I, I think we were talking one time I, I was sitting beside you and I could hear the air handling system in the room where the recording was made. Now, you, that's, you, you picked that up. That's those, those, those are the things that we yeah. talk about that we, yeah. we think of the special features. Yeah, You're exactly right on. Yeah. It's a killer system. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. $25,000 is not chump change by any means, but no. it, dude, it's not ridiculous money. And what you get, go somewhere else and buy $25,000 worth of gear and see if you can get this kind of performance by yourself. It's not very likely. Uh, Gail, I, I, my hat's off to you guys. This is a remarkable system. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Now, yeah. we can talk about any of the other technology you'd like to, but I want to I want to let people know that there's, there's a little box sitting off your other shoulder Right. Which is a new product, right? Right. The, right. the 0 0.5. Yeah. And we, we have to talk about it. 
Yeah, um, please. What now? When's it? When's it? Still, no. still, go ahead. No, I, when, when's it about? You're you're not quite done with it, right? Are you? No, we're we're no we're we're getting we're moving into production right now. Oh, okay. I was I I knew it had been announced, but I thought yeah. it was like you know. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's not available just yet, but it, it will but it, be available in 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 about sixty days. Oh wow! Yeah. Excellent. Knock on wood. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, COVID has just bitten everybody, yeah. right? And yeah. I mean, just even get getting well, getting the parts. The the eye, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just yeah. been a nightmare. It's, uh, microprocessor, you know, board. chips aren't yeah. available. Microprocessors yeah. are hard to come by. But right. tell us about this little guy. What's it do? Well, okay. And again, <laughs> you, you know, again, Martin Logan, you know, the I started, I created the monolith in the beginning. And we'll, we'll go through that later on. Yes, I yes. I created the monolith. And then I said, well, what if I split it down in the middle and, and make it less expensive? And I that was the sequel to the yep. monolith. Well, the same kind of thinking happened was that we put all this work in the image one. And really begun to extract all of the performance that we could out of what can happen with the eye control in the way of wave guiding and the way of time correction and all of that. And in the way of base extension um, in a small chamber size and all of these wonderful things. And I thought, let's what? What if we could, what if I could do that for a bookshelf? What if what if I could shrink all of that down and still get this same kind of performance level? And so we set to work on it. And again, it it, it, it exceeded our expectations, not from the standpoint sonically, it, it but it sounds just as good as the image one. It, it it doesn't quite get as loud naturally. It doesn't quite as go as low in bass if you turn it up loud. But since we have all control of the whole system, this thing, this thing's flat down to about 30, 32 hertz. Wow. Wow. <laughs> all, by, all by itself. And so at normal listening in a large room, I mean, we've had some pretty good sized rooms. I mean, it's got bottom in. I mean, yeah. it's got body. You know, the whole room is just boom. You know, and, and well, yeah, most uh, shelves won't go below 45 or so. So if this thing goes down to 32, this goes down to 32 hertz, yeah, yeah, real 32 hertz, yeah. And now, it, we, in, internally within the eye control, we also have four preset categories that we can establish. And so, not only do we have this wonderful make the walls go away kind of presentation that we've got with the image one and a deep extended bass that should only happen in a full range speaker. <laughs> now, 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 granted, this doesn't do this at ear splitting levels, but right, it does right. it at normal volume levels. Right. Now with the presets, we can say, okay, if you're gonna put this on a desk, here's the physics of what happens on a desk, the back wall, the floor, the blah, 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 blah. You pre, we preset and conf, we pre-configure it. Sure. And if you wanna put it on a bookshelf, we have a preset for the physics of a bookshelf, for the wave physics of the bookshelf. Sure. If you want to put it on the floor on stands, we have a preset for that as well. So it's a bookshelf system. Now, yeah. is it the same eye control or is it a, a different same, version? Of it? Everything's the same. Okay. Same eye control, same tweeter, uh, actually same mid-range drivers as well. We're using, uh, let's see, can I? I've got my uh, phone here. I don't know if I can show uh well there's the drivers there that's right, yeah. <laughs> so that's, yeah we'll it's the same mid-range drivers as well yeah we'll try and put up a, a bigger image of it if you can send me right yeah. right right now so Neo, Neo I love these we use little Neo magnets yeah. for our grill so when this thing locks on it snaps I mean, on it's just, wham <laughs> it's just solid as a rock it's really cute now What's the what will be the retail for the 0.5, Gail? Well, we are working very hard to bring this in, and I'm not making total commitments yet. Sure, but I, think I get we're it. We'll be able to bring this in at about ten thousand dollars for the That's complete amazing. system amplifiers. Uh, constrained layer cabinets, constrained layer cabinet, drivers, eye control, everything. Yeah. That, that's, that's a goal. pretty that's remarkable it. price point, sir. Yeah. 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 Now, 
I will yeah. assume that at some point, like maybe towards the end of the year, I'll get to hear these things at a show. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we're our team here, Jerry and I in particular are, uh, uh looking very we, we want to try and attend as many shows as we can this year sure. hopefully hopefully this uh delta variant you know gives us a break and we keep our fingers can, crossed you know, and we can yeah. all uh you know get to be with each other again. i cannot wait for the social interaction again yeah, i miss it so much um so uh you know marjorie is still planning on doing the denver show the the rocky mountain, International rocky mountain. Fest yes mm -hmm. in october mm -hmm. So we'll keep our fingers crossed. Right. Um, I'm really looking forward October, to getting there. Right. We'll see how it goes. Right. Um, now, the uh, I think it makes absolute sense if you're going to do a smaller product mm -hmm. like that to have profiles set up for on your desk, actually in a bookshelf. You know, because probably the worst place you can put a regular bookshelf speaker is in a bookshelf. In a bookshelf. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so true. Especially if so it has true. a rear port. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, yeah. So I think it's a great idea. Uh, yeah. Now, I assume that um, the do you make a matching stand for it? That is an option, or yes. is it? Yeah, and we'll we'll show some we'll we'll have we'll some images for you. We have okay. a, this cool. Um, really cool extruded cool. aluminum air blade stand cool. with a mill platform. It's pretty cool. Cool. <laughs> that's great. That's extra though. Well, you no, know, I get that. Yeah, I totally get that. Yeah. yeah. That, yeah, that, but that's an amazing nice. price point yeah. if you guys can manage to pull that off. That would yeah. I know we can't hold you to it, but I'm I'm glad you're shooting for that. It's yeah, we're all driving a really good deal. That. Yeah, we, yeah. That's, what we, that's where we want to be. Yeah. Well, so now, um, is this? I know you have the website. Mm -hmm. Are there is there a dealer network for this? Or are you guys direct? Well, I, tell, I tell you on on the bookshelf, and that's one of the one of the reasons we're we're going to direct market the bookshelf. I was wondering if that's where yeah. you were going with it. I mean, we, you know, we welcome the retail community and 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 uh, we welcome the retail community. Sure, absolutely. But this primarily is going to be a directly marketed a product. Yeah. Well, congratulations on it. We're getting there in the right price point. I can't yeah. wait to hear it. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Is there anything I haven't thought to ask you about with the Icon products or well, anything you feel we need to talk about? Well, I think we we have really kind of um, covered most of the most of the bases. Absolutely. Well, in that case, yeah. in, in that case, let me thank you for your time today on this. Oh, and now I'm going to I'm going to hope that you're going to give me another opportunity. You're going to come back to the channel and we can talk about the history of Martin Logan, because buddy, I think that's a fascinating story. Okay, I remember, I think it was, I, I, I didn't, the monolith came out, what, 83? 82. We, 82. we were in 82. I don't yes. think I got to hear it till about 84 or so. Right. Right. But if you remember what I said to you yeah. on that speaker uh, uh, round table we did, I was like, oh, so that's what Peter, Peter Walker was trying to do. <laughs> Thank you. But it was well, impressive. That's a big, so, that's a big compliment. Thank you. Well, so, I, yeah. so but yeah. we'll do that. Uh, we'll do that again. So everybody yeah. prepare to, to back and see this wonderful gentleman talk about some history that I'll never forget, buddy. I, you know, yeah. I've been around this game since I think I started selling stereo equipment before I could legally drive a car. I was 15 years old when I started selling gear. And that was, oh, God. <laughs> 1970. Yeah, exactly. I knew that too. Yeah. A little bit before you got started in 78. Anyway, but Gail, thank you so very much for your time and for taking the time to share this with my audience and people in general. I think it's a wonderful product. I'm telling everybody to get out and go hear it at a show. And I really look forward to the launch of the 0.5. I can't yeah, wait. My pleasure, Greg. And, and uh, great to have a chance to talk with everyone. And I uh, hope to see you all. Uh, well, uh, this is a great way to take advantage of this whole COVID thing, dude. Yeah, I mean, we, we really we really think this is going to work out well because yeah. of that. But I can't wait, like yeah. you said, to get back to where we can become a, a, a community again. Yeah, yeah. For, sure. for sure. Thanks again, yeah. sir. Yeah, thank you, Greg. I'll talk to you soon. Talk soon. Take care. Already, right, bye-bye now. What a remarkable product, guys. I swear, if you were taken blindfolded into a room with the Image Icon 1 set up and optimized, you'd never guess that what you were hearing was so compact and affordable. This system delivers a sonic result well above anything I could achieve by putting a system of separates together 
for the same dollar investment. Go hear this system at your first opportunity, guys. It will impress even the most jaded listeners among you. Now, if you are enjoying the content and information presented here and would like to see more content like it, please click that subscribe button and don't forget to like and share links to your favorite episodes with your friends or on social media. You know I love hearing from you, so be sure to post comments and questions. And information on supporting the channel may be found in today's description section or at my website, theaudioanalyst.com. Thanks for finding the time to drop by and visit today. Please stay safe and keep the music playing. Till next time, cheers.